never wondered how life would have turned out if you had access to learning marketable job skills and mentorship straight out of high school. Join us as we speak to Lucy Chepchumba, co-founder of the Good Kenyan Foundation, and learn more on the impact of having these skills, more so on young people who are not able to join institutions of higher learning. How do we build the capacity of these young minds? Through giving our time, skills, and resources, tune in and join the movement for a better future the Ubuntu Given Podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to the Ubuntu Given Podcast by the Given Tuesday Africa Hub. I will be your host today. My name is Beth Wanyoro. Today we are joined by an amazing woman, uh, a lady who has given out her life to serve the community around her from the Kalenjin land with her grandmother to come into Nairobi and uh, which is the capital city of Kenya to impacting society, to impacting young people. And it's going to be an amazing ride with you, Lucy, and with our listeners as we join in to know how do we become champions of giving in our communities, in our everyday lives. So Karibu Sana, um, my listeners, please give a round of applause to Lucy. Yay! Whoop, 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 whoop. Welcome, Lucy. Thank you. Karibu Sana. Welcome Asante. to the Ubuntu Giving Podcast. We are excited to have you on board. Uh, please introduce yourselves and tell us who you are, what you do, and also a bit of what do you do for fun? Oh, what do you do? Okay. So who I, who I am first, I guess. I am an African woman. Um, I'm a Christian and um, I'm a happy person. I like being happy and smiling a lot. Um, what do I do? That's, that's the second question, yeah? So yeah. I, am, I am the co-founder and executive director of Good Kenyan Foundation. Good Kenyan is a non-profit that works with young people uh, who've just cleared high school as they transition from high school to the next step of their life. We have a three-month program that they, we take them through the three-month program to support them uh, during that transition and also to offer mentorship um, for them even beyond the program. And uh, when they leave Good Kenyan, they should be able to transition at least to college and university. And if they're not able to, find entry-level jobs or um, start a small business. Basically, so that they are not idle, uh, they're able to be guided around their career choices, what do you really want to do. And for those who did not get it, you know, we... We sometimes become a very academic society that we forget yeah. about people who may not excel academically, but they do have some talents. And because of the backgrounds that they come from, they're not able to really uh, figure out what their talents are. So we really help them find out what they can do, what they're good at, what they can excel at, and how they can find um, make an income through that. So that's practically what we do for the three months uh, at Good Kenyan. And finally, what I like to do for fun, huh? I like to watch rugby, so I'm sad that the World Cup is over. <laughs> I, I'm a South African uh, fan. I'm a box fan. I also, what else do I like to do? Hmm. Nowadays, I don't know because I think work has taken my life. <laughs> when I was younger, there were so many other things I could do, yeah. But then I also just like to curl with a, a glass of wine and a good book. Great. So Thank before you. we jump into the uh, conversation today... Mm-hmm. We are from different cultures, yes. and as you know, this is an African uh, hub mm-hmm. podcast. So I don't know if you've done Animal Kingdom, where you I say start and stop, and then you pick a letter in between. Anyway, we have twenty one <laughs> questions. <laughs> Every okay. day is a learning day. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> uh, we have twenty one questions mm-hmm. um, that I'd, I'd want us you to pick a number between mm-hmm. 1 and 21 mm-hmm. and i will ask you the question okay between 1 and 21 yeah i'll pick number one first oh wow okay <laughs> so the first question is if you had mm-hmm. one superpower that could mm-hmm. make this world a better place or save our world what mm-hmm. would it be i think if i had a superpower i would want it to be a power i can equalize everyone like mm. we are equal, we no one feels no one feels smaller than the other. Yeah. We all have the same opportunity. So that if you're not hardworking, if you're lazy, then it's your problem. 
<laughs> but right now it's very unbalanced. There are so many uh, factors that, especially like just being born in Africa is already a problem because there are mm. too many other things that are against you. Then imagine being born, me, I was born in the rural parts of Kenya, being a rural girl, being a woman. So I would really like to just to equalize in terms of opportunities, in terms of uh, things that people can do. That would be my superpower. I'd be very happy. Great. You have another opportunity to choose another number. Another number. Wow. I'm so, I'm such a choleric, so let's go for number two. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, number two. What act of generosity have you received that you've never forgotten? Wow. Uh, I think for me, the one that I've never forgotten is that one of the mothers of the young people that we we, we served, um, she, he had just cleared um, a program, a three-month program, mm-hmm. and um, was going to college and actually got a scholarship through our connection. Um, and the mother lived in Kangemi, and she walked from Kangemi to come and say thank you. And she wow. gave me 200 Kenya shillings. And I think... Mm-hmm. That was the most precious 200 Kenyan shillings that we received at Good Kenyan. This was like, this is do something with this. And just to learn that she works so that she can save the money, so that she can give to us, for me was the utmost act of generosity when someone gives when they don't even have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And to give context from Kangemi to Ngumo, yes. that's, that's a distance. That's a distance, uh, probably yeah. 20 plus kilometers. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So it's uh it's what we say in Giving Tuesday is everybody, no matter who you are, you have something that you can give. Absolutely. So I can I can only imagine what impact that had on you without her knowing that uh she had such a great impact. Having yeah, just, just saying thank you. Just coming to say thank you was enough. Like I was like not many say thank you. So just coming yeah. to say thank you, making time to come and say thank you, and then offering me money, and, and it's the money you don't really have, Yeah, something else. Wow. And I had to honor her for accepting it as much as maybe I could do without it, but I had to honor her and accept it. Yeah, because that was the only way she knew how to, to say thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. So thank you for that, Lucy. And mm. we'll jump right into it. Um, mm-hmm. Could you share with us the story of how did Good Kenyan Foundation come into existence? Uh, the mission um, mm-hmm. in championing the, cha- the giving champions activation. Okay. So how Good Kenyan came about was several factors led to it. Just growing up, uh, seeing my grandmother giving back to our community. My grandmother, I think, was the first generous person that I knew. Mm. Um, her home always had people with different needs. And when I was younger, I couldn't really understand what she was doing. And I remember at one point, my aunties and uncles, my mom, they would, they would really be like, you give too much, you, you're giving too much time, you're doing this. But I think she really thrived in that. And then I didn't understand, and now I totally understand. Um, yeah. So that, I think, planted a seed in me. There was also something about giving back. I also learned from that process because people will come for school fees, people will come for medical bills, people will come even for learning injustices, you know. And I learned yeah. during that time and spending a lot of time with my grandmother was that we had at least more than someone else. And it was our duty mm. to share and to give. And I think that it was imprinted in me for a very long time. Then years later, yeah. I lost my mother when I was in high school. I think there's a shift that happens when you lose your mother. Being an African daughter, being a firstborn, um, I literally just be- moved from being an adolescent girl fighting with my mother to now being a mother, literally, of my siblings. You know, my last born sister was 16 years old. Uh, sorry, it was six months old. Now she's 26. Wow. I said 26 or 27 when I forget her age. Good job on so, that. Yeah, so she was six months old. So um, that really was such an impact in my life because I did have my grandmother to provide for me. So I can never say I lacked the basic needs. I had also my aunties and, and my family came together. My dad, yeah. not very present, but he did also come through. But then I I was, there's something I needed more than just that. And people were busy with their families. My grandmother didn't know better. 
Like I felt like I would tell her some things and she's never heard about it. And you can imagine she was not young, she was old, um, raised in rural parts of Kenya. I mean, some of these things were a bit strange to her. Like, what do I want to yeah. do for a living? What career do I want and everything? And I think when I finished high school, I felt the gap even more. Because then I felt like, I, I, I yes, I can go for anywhere I want to go, but where mm. do you know where I want to go? Then I really used to have a lot of free time. So I, used to, I came to Nairobi, like every parent in Nairobi sends their child to Nairobi. <laughs> I, came, I, came, I came to stay with an uncle, um here in Nairobi and, and the, his family and I used to do computer classes and French. Mm, that, was, and, e- that is every Kenyan uh, high school <laughs> graduate. Exactly, post high school. But now I learned privileged Kenyan post high school graduate because okay. not everyone else has that opportunity. I see the then was about what, 15,000? Not many people yeah. could do but then I used to do ICDL, I used to do French in the morning I have given pocket money but I had a lot of idle time. Yeah. I had a lot of time. We would go around that Nairobi center. <laughs> we'll go back and <laughs> forth. We'll do what? Because, yeah, my dad will show, throw a call once in a while. You know, people are busy. And I was just, I, I just saw other people doing things. And maybe for me, because I was already a parent, I was a bit responsible. So I saw so many things happening and people really being led. Like someone is taking a matatu, they go to do where, to whose house, for a day party and that kind of a thing. And I just, for me, it really felt like if my mom was here, she would really be monitoring my steps. I also had friends who their mom would call them, Mepika Wapi, where are you? Sorry yeah. uh, for the non-Swahili speakers. And then now, um, I that's again something else that was inputted in my brain. Then I started working. So I went to college, then I came back, I started working, and I started mentoring at, at Akilidad. Actually, I used to be a mentor at Akilidad. And we'll go to different high Shout schools. Shout out to Akilidada. I know, Akilidad, I really, wherever my mentorship um, uh, things. I'm also I went an to, alumni. To oh, oh yeah. good stuff. Really good. So I used to do the high schooler program. I used to go to different high schools and, and mentor. And this was on my yeah. free time. This is what I used to do on my Saturdays. And I would speak to different girls because we go to different schools. That was yeah. when there's also, I felt like, okay, this is really working good in school, but when they leave school, who follows through? Mm-hmm. What happens to them? Because in, in school, there are teachers, there are people to follow up, but what happens after school? So yeah. that's another part again. I worked in corporate Kenya, left corporate Kenya and started a business. I said that business was a gift business. So mm-hmm. many at times, our Christmas holidays were the most, uh, most busy time. So during this yeah. time of, of our Christmas holidays, we'd need a lot of um, what you call temporary stuff. I would then ask someone, please get me. So I, I asked one of our cleaning ladies to get me some some young people to come yeah. and, and help. And I realized they're fast, they're good. I, I was working with them. But then you pay them on Friday, on Monday, they are broke. They don't have <laughs> anything. You ask them, what did you do with the money? Ah, me, I bought this. Oh, me, I did this. Me, I took someone for a date. They, they didn't have that financial planning or personal planning. They didn't mm. really know what they want to do. And then also, I asked them, like, okay, so you finished high school. What do you want to do? It's like, oh, I wanted to be a lawyer, but uh, I didn't get the right grade to be a lawyer. So I don't even know. Yeah. And some of them don't even think about it because they're like, my parents have no money for school fees. I am just going to go to what they are doing. Basically, I'm going to go to work with my dad in the morning. Mm. And that now was, like, the final for, like, okay, God is speaking to me here. In yeah. terms of like, there's something I can do to these people. Not everyone, but there's a few that I can do. Then we met with with with, with Humphrey. We'd been friends for a very long time, and yeah. he was almost retiring during, for his rugby career. And he kept saying he doesn't know what he wants to do. He's trying to find yeah. out what his legacy is. Does he want to be a coach? Does he want to go to sports administration? So it was a time for him that was an uncertain time. So it was a transition yeah. time for him. Mm. And I remember just seeing how difficult that was. And I told him, you have a name. Why don't you use it? Yeah. And we then sat down and thought, okay, let's do a program together. Naively, mm. let's just do something. <laughs> <laughs> and then now we started thinking about it. We started reaching out to our friends. And now that's how I learned about the, the impact of, of, of people giving their time. You know, yeah. growing up, sometimes you just think giving is money. But then we started reaching out to different experts in different fields and people who will say, I'll help you do the curriculum. A friend of ours called Chris was like, I'll do for you the curriculum for entrepreneurship. 
because that's what he's an expert on. Someone else yeah. is like, one day I even called an organization to ask if they had a curriculum for life skills for young yeah. people. And this lady, I kept calling, she said, there's something we're developing, but she, they were never finished. And then she told me one day, what do you really need? And we mm. met and talked and we worked with her since then. Wow. So we put together the program just like that, but I don't know how we thought we'll run. I thought I'll still do my job and do this on the side. <laughs> I don't even know. I didn't, I, I, I just had, <laughs> I could only see just a hundred meters away. I couldn't see beyond it, but all I yeah, knew is I wanted to. the impact that you would have. Yes, I just knew that I wanted to help a young person who is very uncertain when they finish high school and especially a young person from a background that may not be able to afford to pay anything for them. I wanted to yeah. help them bring my friends who are experts in different careers to help them uh, navigate that. I wanted to bring, uh, I wanted them to learn something, how they can uh, they can make money while they're in the program because a lot of them are now told you have to take care of your household or you don't have money to take you to college. Some of them are even living on their own. So yeah. this young person, that cycle of poverty continues because then immediately they start making money for today. What do they do? Mm. They go to what we call in Kenya Kibarua. Yeah. What Casual happens? Liberals. Casual rebara means that you earn for that day, you spend for that day, and you continue like that. But then now here we are telling them, okay, today you have to make something because your stomach is rambling, right? This <laughs> yeah. is how you can make something for today. But I would like you to 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 to, to divide your time into two, where you're making something for today and you're also yeah. working for the future. What courses mm. do you need to go? What what do you need to put away for your future so that your 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 future can be different from your present or that of your parents. And that's basically yeah. how Good Kenyan came together. Wow. Yeah. Just uh, two friends coming together to impact and mentor and hold uh, another young person, yes. another young person's hand. And uh, as you're speaking, uh, mm -hmm. it got me, uh, you talked about how your friend gave the curriculum for entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Another person came in and gave, you know, gave, gave and given are very awards that keep on coming. I don't know if it's because it's the Ubuntu giving <laughs> podcast. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> but uh, how have you, as even you've continued, because uh, mm -hmm. the Kenyan has been in existence since 2017. Yes. But that's not uh that's not a little time i know we're going to our seventh year <laughs> happy seven years no uh, seven years in, is in april is yeah in april mm -hmm. yes we're getting there we're getting I there um mm -hmm. how have you managed to foster that culture of giving uh despite you being coming from a background that used to give bringing these different people together and fostering mm -hmm. the culture of giving even beyond just you as the leadership uh mm -hmm. but also within the people the young people that are coming for your program okay so uh one of the things that i think i learned very quickly when i started with kenyan was i needed to ask <laughs> that's one of the most difficult things to ask yeah. and to receive because sometimes somehow you are you think you're self-sufficient i don't know <laughs> so we started asking a lot i remember our yeah. first uh launch for us to launch because once we did our we did our excel we're like we do not have this money we cannot start this program <laughs> you know and a friend of what mine is child, excel excel is like let me sorry we did our maths like our budget okay okay so we, we, had, we had this excel sheet that we had used to look at it every day and we're like we can't afford this you know we are punching okay. way above our weight um, yeah. Then one day I was just with a friend of mine because I'd, I'd speak to anyone who cares to listen about what I want to do, what I plan to do. And some of them didn't even understand what I'm saying. I was just like, okay, she's just rambling. I don't know what she's saying. <laughs> um, then uh, a friend of mine challenged me and told me, why can't you just start? You have, I have, I have very many friends and I have very good friends. I have always been yeah. blessed with very good friends. I have friends from my primary school. I'm that person who just gathers people as I go. Uh -huh. So my pal challenged me and told me, you have very many friends. Humphrey is some form of celebrity. He's been the rugby captain for the Kenya team. Um, he has some form of following. Uh, why can't you put up an event? I am in, my friend, uh, her name is Sylvia. She's in the event industry. She was like, I'll give you tables, chairs. I'll give you deco. Yeah. So this is the first one giving. And she's like, and you also have other friends in the event industry. So I have a friend of mine as always very close to me called Melissa. She's like, I'll give you tents. 
you know i have forgotten so i'll give you terms so just find a venue you have the event ready a friend of mine called chemtai was like i will coordinate the event for you because she's a planner mm. so chemtai coordinated the event for us and we just started putting together by people just saying i'll give this i'll do this i'll do this uh, other people are like i'll advertise for you I'll do this for you. You know someone did for us our logo. Someone was like I'll do for you the print work. It was just people yeah. coming together giving and we launched. And once we launched, people got to know about us, then they started looking for the young people. The first cohort Hanfe and I literally just um uh financed it from ourselves because we done an event. Yes, we yeah. were given most of the items, but you still have to pay for food. There are things that you still have to pay for. And we mm. charge people for a ticket. And the people who came, basically, that, that event just paid itself. So then we needed yeah. to continue. So we had one staff member. A lot of volunteers were giving their time. And then uh, and then now we started going. And then we'll just chip from our pocket to pay for rent, electricity, you know, utilities. So how, yeah. first, how we fostered that, I think first, just that now we, need, we realize this is we have strength in people. And there's mm. so much um, there's network. so much wealth in the people that we know. So yeah. we realize, okay, how do we... So one of the aspects of the program is mentorship, one-on-one mentorship. So our first yeah. mentors, I don't think even they had that choice. We just told them, you're mentoring, you're mentoring, you're mentoring. <laughs> you know, we, we put them to mentor. And then yeah. we started developing that mentorship structure to where it is now, where it's professional, where it's structured, where I don't even know the mentors, you know, uh, personally. So yeah. um, we just realized that there's a wealth in people and people can give. And people were like, I know how to write, because I didn't even know how to write the proposal. I didn't know the nonprofit lingo. Like, I was like, impact, <laughs> outcome. You Especially people are saying the same co- thing many times. Corporates. Yes. Yeah, I would do just for you three slides and I show you, you make money and we move. So I, I now got someone who will help me to do that. I put up together a board of friends of mine. I request them to be an advisory board to just help. And most of the time I was like, okay, you've been in the development sector. You know one, two, three things. And I started also getting connections. Uh, people yeah. are like, oh, there's this event here for this organization. Come. And I remember the first time I would go to a room and I had no no one. Mm. And they are talking like this language that's not English <laughs> or Swahili, you know. But slowly by slowly... Language barrier. Yes, because I don't know. But slowly by slowly, people just gave of themselves. I reached out to so many people. So I've learned to ask. I've learned mm. to receive. And of course, I have just reinforced my belief in giving. In giving. And yeah. from what you, you were talking about, uh, mm. something comes to mind called network mapping, where you just... Uh, uh, put out the people in your network and what can they give is it a skill is it a time is it resources you know and just going by what can you give approaching someone from a point of i think you have time could you mm-hmm. give time in mentoring one person you know mm-hmm. and for you to also be open to accepting because most times we are taught of only giving and we are not taught of receiving, receiving when yes. it is our turn to get uh, to to be given to. Yes. So that is very that stood out for me. Um, and in Good Kenyan, there's mm-hmm. something you call a local champion. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have talked about how you have worked with your friends who have now mm-hmm. become like uh, supporting to yeah. good kenyan mm-hmm. but uh, can you talk to us about what does a local champion in the good kenyan lingo mm-hmm. <laughs> now that you have a good kenyan lingo <laughs> <laughs> yes now we have a good kenyan lingo and we call it actually we call them we have so we have friends of good kenyan mm-hmm. these are people who we it's a community we call upon mainly made of online community but also oh, an wow. offline community so we have friends of good kenyan who will call upon when something happens yeah. these are made up of mentors volunteers they're made up of friends just people who have given their time people who've been visited uh, then we do then have uh, other people that we've reached out to because of specific uh, strengths that they have uh yeah. people who have maybe uh know a lot of people and that kind of a thing so we've had we have champions we call them champions we call them ambassadors and we 
because I think we started from a place where we didn't have grants to apply for, we didn't even know how to apply grants, we really yeah. uh, worked on individual giving and local giving, basically Kenyans giving. Mm. So because of that, we needed to come up with different campaigns. So I actually put up a, and said, who wants to be part of a fundraising committee and help? And I have the same people that I work with for a very long time. I mean, that yeah. number just keep increasing or maybe someone will drop out. But then those, those are my first champions to me because we sit down, we come up with these crazy ideas and we execute them. This is what okay. we're going to do to raise money. Then mm. from that committee, it bore this thing of reaching out to personalities or people with large numbers online. So one of our champions is someone like Denis Ombachi, who is a, an Olympian, a rugby player, and now a self-taught chef. He calls himself Roaming Chef online. And yeah. uh, Ombachi has such a huge following because of he has this specific phrase, done, and people seem to like the way he cooks very fast <laughs> and finishes his done. done. And, and he's such a generous human being. Because whatever we call upon him, he does give over time. He's able to sit down plan a campaign and execute it and give without asking for pay. People pay a lot of money to have a in their campaigns. So yeah. then we've, we've then had, we've worked with several personalities. We even have friends. I can give an example of one of our local champions. One of our friends became a mentor in Good Kenya. Mm -hmm. His name is Kefa. After he became a mentor, he now then just, his own actually gave his time. He did our website mm -hmm. and he continues to update our website when you need to. And then he, the other day, he championed us at his organization. So he works for this multinational. They had a, a program whereby you can go and pitch at, at local charity that people can, 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 can come and volunteer time Support. and volunteer yeah. and, and give money. And he went mm -hmm. and pitches and he was selected. Wow. And he, he rallied his colleagues to come. They came for, imagine the organization was paying for any person who's to volunteer per hour. So if wow. you volunteer two hours, three hours, the organization was paying us. Mm. It was like if any hour volunteered, the organization gave gave us money. Wow. You see now he was our champion because he went, he called his colleagues, he did what? There's even a time after that he even invited his friends to play football with the young yeah. people at Good Kenyan. It was amazing. They did a mentorship session. They played football first, then they did a mentorship session. That's yeah. an, a, a local champion because yeah. he's, he's an, someone else would see those males at a company coming and they would ignore them. It's time. It's a yeah. lot of work. He has to keep, basically he has to, he has to go to every colleague and pitch to them yeah. and ask them to help vote for Good Kenyan. Yeah. That's, that's an amazing champion. And, and that's uh, giving of time. Yes. Because uh, he did not give like financial uh, yes resources directly but him leveraging for good kenyan that is uh using his time using his um human resource using his network to just build you and i i like that you have different hats for different uh champions because mm -hmm. again a human being will give that which to they have to yeah. a program or a project that sees uh they see impact happening yeah so that is to also say that good kenyan is actually having impact yes, yeah it is. <laughs> i thank god for that and i think also maybe something to just say on that i know many people are willing to give honestly that's what i've learned i've received yeah. from strangers we've received from strangers literally yeah. people we don't know you know and i learned mm. that people just need some form of structure and some form of accountability Mm. so people have been banned so they've supported maybe some charities locally and then the, cha the person goes and buys themselves a Mercedes and disappears you know so people yeah. need to know what is the process how does how does if I give of money how is this money being used you know number yeah. one number two people also didn't, never thought that there's giving where you can give your time yeah you know? so it's sort of it's, it's, it's yes it's there but it's a bit new yeah. And I've learned that wherever we have a mentor, they come, they give him their time mentoring, they eventually even turn up to be an, a, a financial donor. Mm. Because now they learn, they go to the program. So people, yeah. you just ha need to have structures. You need to communicate to these people and update mm. them what's happening. And you need yeah. to have, you know, you need to be ready to be asked questions. 
So if you're yeah. asking, be ready to be asked questions that may be uncomfortable for you. Yeah. And then be ready to be asked questions so that you can you can keep just remember what is your end goal. What outcome do you want? You want more young people to be helped. So make it easier for this person to help. Very easy. Yeah. And make it easier for this person to stay on supporting their cause. And also that speaks to credibility. How credible are you? Yes. Are people have people who have given to you? What are they saying about that? Exactly. You know. Yes. And building credibility is not an easy task because it's not built over a month or a year. It's something True. that keeps coming. You keep putting in the work to it. Exactly. Uh, and so from from your story, mm-hmm. you know, people may hear you saying how your friends came through, how you are leveraging on online and in, uh, uh, online platforms, mm-hmm. because I have seen you do Instagram lives during mm-hmm. Giving Tuesday. Yeah. Um, and I have also seen some of the, the caliber of influencers that you have brought upon mm-hmm. um, from Kenya. Mm-hmm. And that is brilliant, you know, mm-hmm. leveraging, even as we evolve technologically, leveraging on that. Mm-hmm. But have you experienced any challenges? You know, it could of be, course. it has been a smooth <laughs> sailing, you know. Of course, what is a world without challenges? <laughs> of course we have. I mean, this year was the one of the biggest, one of the most challenging year that we've had. Last year we didn't raise a lot of money, so this year we've really been scraping off. We yeah. actually had to close uh, in May, in end of April, and to mm. to reopen um, in September because we wow. couldn't afford one cohort. We literally could not afford to have that cohort. So I think it's also very good to be tra- transparent and vulnerable around things like that. And for yeah. me, I think it was a very hard thing because you know you do work, good work, you know you're creating impact, but then you know there's value. There's value in what you're, what you're doing. doing. So one of the challenges definitely is one is there's donor fatigue. When you're raising from individually, there's donor fatigue. So that yeah. really hit us because the same people you keep asking from, they're tired, definitely. I mean, I truly, truly appreciate those who still continue to support. The second thing, the cost of living and everything that's been happening in the world now is so crazy. So you yeah. find that people don't even have for themselves. So how they have to give? Um, non-financial challenges could be, I mean, there, you see the 30 celebrities that have come, you don't see the 200 that said no or didn't mm. pick up our calls or blue tickets. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't see yeah. that. So when we request, we normally request to so many people. So the ones you see are the ones who say yes. And it looks like, oh, all these people. But we have asked we've gotten more no's than the yeses for sure. Yeah, we've even gotten people who say, Yes, I'm coming on in any other time. Maybe their phone dies, they, an emergency happens, or they even just don't pick up your call. So, mm. those are the challenges that happen. Um, you've also definitely the challenges about young people that you take in. I have made a I've made this uh, promise to people, I have taken these 20 people, but two have to leave the program because yeah. of several reasons. So, two stop coming. And yet I've done two months of their training. I can't get back that money for two months of their training. So you, yeah. these are challenges to me because then I'm reporting the numbers that are less maybe than the other numbers. Uh, definitely fundraising challenges. We've never, we've, we've gotten some institutional funding in terms of grants, but not really broken that. Except and one of the challenges I know is because we really take in small numbers at a time. And for yeah. me, I'm very, very particular about that because I really do want to go deep and give real change. I don't want to just mm-hmm. tick numbers for the sake of funding. Yeah, I don't want to just give and say, I will influence 50,000 children. And I'm not doing that. And that's yeah. the one thing that I made a promise to us. Like, I know some people know how to write very good proposals and know how to write very good reports and very good and many um, evaluations. But maybe... You know what? What exactly have you done? Have you really yeah. impacted this person? So one of the challenges we face is that we our numbers are smaller. Would like to grow definitely. We are going to Eldoret. I'm going back to the village. We are starting. Yeah, yeah. In, yes, we're doing a girls program in Eldoret from January, and now yeah. that's what we are fundraising for this giving Tuesday. Um and yeah, so for me, we'll continue maybe picking numbers that we can we can afford as we grow and, and go, but then making sure that we are really doing real impact. Yeah, so the challenges are many. I might not finish when I'm saying the challenges, but <laughs> I've also learned, I think maybe I can share 
things that I've learned around the challenges, yeah? Yeah. One thing is that I used to get so emotionally involved in these young people that when someone drops out, I get hurt for real. Mm. And I have learned to know, know that I've done my best and let it go and let it be. Yeah. So that was my first lesson. I think I think the first two years I would really get stressed about it. Or sometimes mm. you see someone's real potential and you can see how they're abusing the opportunity that they have. And then they yeah. regret when this opportunity is not really available for them. I used to also get annoyed and I'm like, people have given because of me. I have used my name to be given. Yeah. Why are you wasting these resources? But then I've learned as long as I've done my best, as long as I'm honest in what I'm doing, um, it's okay. Another thing I've learned is that the relationships in terms of institution funding will take years to build. And mm. I have to keep grinding. Um, yeah. To just keep going. Um, and then uh, I've just learned that, you know, sometimes it's not the people you expect to get from are the ones that will give you. <laughs> and, so, I, you know, you know, long time ago you would think, but this is my friend. She has a budget. She has, she has her budget. <laughs> why is she not giving? <laughs> why, why, why is she not plugging? Maybe yeah, why is she not plugging thing? in? But also you don't know what other factors bind them or what is going on. So I've learned to not take them personally, to take things personally. I've learned to just do my best and leave it at that. And that has yeah. really helped my well-being. Just uh, put in like sort of boundaries to... Yes how far you you need to go yes because and i can't the end of the help day, anyone everyone yeah i can't help everyone i've also learned because as we you go these are the things that you learn to go and sorry to interrupt you when you when some people when you're giving to them they keep taking and taking more and sometimes someone tells you oh i have not eaten and they're lying or i've not done this i've not done this mm-hmm. so just learning to have boundaries and to be sure according to your strategy this is our work this is what we support you to do yeah the rest of the work is you're doing we will give you this platform this opportunity for you to do so we cannot start doing one two three things that are beyond our mandate and sometimes yeah. it was so hard for me to say no and we've, mm-hmm. sometimes we've had to go beyond our mandate you know because i remember yeah. made me share this story um we lost one of the young people once in our program mm-hmm. that thing really shattered me it shattered me because she was unwell. And I yeah. knew she was unwell. And I basically sent her to, to see a doctor. And I remember uh, Humphrey bought the medicine, uh, paid the doctor, I bought the medicine. Because you can't use the program money for that. That's yeah. something out of the program. And we, so we gave her the medicine. We The doctor saw her. And then she, she she got admitted again to hospital. And we did this second time now, we didn't know. By the time we were knowing, she had passed on. Only to wow. discover that she went to this public hospital and she was given medicine on an empty stomach, TB medication on an empty stomach. So this wow. girl was actually needed food first before the medicine. The medicine. I was so guilty about that thing for a very long time because I was like, oh, surely, what is food? You know, I can get food. But then I had to forgive myself and said, this is what I was meant to give. I didn't know what was happening. But then again, now I yeah. also learned from that and we started cooking at Good Kenyan so that they can have lunch. And and that also people are giving. People give like, you know, from sharks, people send us maize, beans, what we cook. So that then yeah. I don't want to know someone will never die because they didn't have food. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, just putting boundaries and making peace and forgiving yourself and giving yourself grace. I'm sorry for that. Yeah, that I was can imagine uh, the how hard thing. that that was. Yeah, that was that was something else. But uh, looking at the brighter side of it, now you turn that into something else more impactful. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So good job for that. Um, and thank you. As we're coming to a close. Um, yeah. What advice would you give our listeners who aspire to become champions of change in their own communities? You see, you have said that you're going back to your home ground, to mm, your home yes. in Eldoret, you yes. know. And there are people who are in communities where they are wondering, how can I give back? How can mm. I? Or they, they see this is such a huge problem. I'm not mm. able to give back. How can you advise them to go about giving back in their societies? First, just give. First advice, just give. And 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 um, I think one thing, my advice, and I maybe I don't know what other people have advised before. 
I'll say that give things that you also sort of enjoy because sometimes then you will be, you'll be plugged in well and you'll do better. Mm. I love one of gifts. Big one of financial gifts are good, but I really love that community of someone yeah. who maybe gives periodically, like a monthly giver is such an important person. Um, someone who volunteers and say, maybe I give you two hours every week or maybe I give you three hours a month. Some systematic giving is very good. So me, I, I'm really a big champion on some form of systematic giving whereby yeah. you, it, it really creates impact. And I, I'm not negating the fact that you can really change someone's life by one of minting, one of mentorship, one of give, um, one of financial aid. You can. That it, yeah. it has its place. But for me, I think I really would like to focus on um, a long-term giving. So choose yeah. something that is easy for you, something that you like, something that you're very passionate about, and give. Another yeah. thing is that even as I was, was starting with Kenyan, I felt like in fact, there are many times I would wake up myself from sleep and say, you're mad. <laughs> what do you think you're doing? <laughs> you know? And I know I could see the fear in the eyes of my friends sometimes and my siblings. They look at me and I'm like, yeah. you know, and I, you might feel that way, but please don't. However small you think your give is, you do not know the, behind the curtain impact. what that impact mm. will do. Yeah. So you could think, I'm just giving a thousand shillings a month to good Kenyan. Let me give an example. Mm. You do not know what that a thousand shillings a month means. Yeah. You understand? Literally, yeah. I can tell you tea leaves. So tea, we have tea for the month. Yeah, that's Isn't sorted. It? You don't yeah, need it's to sorted. think about it. Yeah, so I have someone who's been giving us five thousand a month for a very long time. Yeah. I can literally say what that goes to to him. Mm. So yeah. systematic giving, don't ever think your give is small, however it is it is a huge impact to someone else. Yeah. Uh, don't be afraid to give back. Uh, sometimes you feel like, in fact, I remember I was like, who am I thinking that I can give? What do I have? <laughs> I didn't even have my own life sorted out, you know. But then yeah. I also learned that, to me, it gives me joy. It gives me really joy to give. I really like to see the eyes change for these young people that we serve from mm. the first day to the last day, the confidence they come back and give me the results, their jobs, they're getting a new job, they're getting a promotion, wow. they're passing in school, they're being school leadership at the university. I love that. So I really do enjoy that and I love giving. And it's a very selfish thing because, again, I am happy, I feel joyful, I feel purposeful. You know, it's a good thing. Yeah. So choose something and you will not regret it. What I'll tell you, never regret giving. You will yeah. never regret giving. And don't ever say, if I give, this person must do one, two, three things. Sometimes they don't do, like that young person mm. who pays school fees for, for a relative or yeah. something. They may not do what you expected them to do. But imagine it's okay, you've given. Yeah. yeah. In in Kenya, we say tenda wema, nenda zako. zako. Exactly. Just uh, be kind, do good, and move on. Do your bit and live, yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, and from what you're saying, it's... Mm it's speaking that the impact that you have continued to have over the years is what has kept you going, you yes. know? Mm. And I can I can hear it from your voice <laughs> when they bring that result, uh, those results leaves mm. and those job opportunities that they have gotten. So keep doing it. Keep doing uh, impacting the lives of young people. And we are coming to a close, but we have a new segment that was introduced. Mm -hmm. That is Ask the Host Anything. Uh, so we'll open it up to you. Are you ready? <laughs> I, am, I, am I ready, though? Are you sure? <laughs> um, I think, what do I want to ask you? I want to ask you, mm -hmm. is there a time that you didn't give and you felt you should have given and you felt guilty for not giving? And what was that? Oh, wow. Who? Okay. Uh, you just went in. <laughs> I asked if you're ready. <laughs> uh, um, yes, there is. Mm -hmm. And I, so, in in, in Nairobi, mm -hmm. there are, yeah, mm -hmm. and, Previously, I used to give 
so much and i would have in conversations with them with, mm-hmm. you know even in in line way probably they will not they don't need that 20 shillings mm-hmm. as much as mm-hmm. they would need someone to ask them how are you doing yeah you know mm-hmm. and i would i would engage in that sense mm-hmm. uh until there was an expose mm-hmm. of how <laughs> <laughs> of how these people they are yeah. actually in business. Some of them are mm-hmm. in business, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, that took me aback <laughs> because I was like, "What? All the people that have been, you know, mm-hmm. giving to you and seeing actually being able to see that mm-hmm. there's a child who's coming to ask me for food, mm-hmm. and there's a woman seated somewhere waiting for them." to come back yeah Mm -hmm. so one time i i think i had done i had i had done a shopping or something i Mm -hmm. I had something in my bag Mm -hmm. and this guy approached me and what took me back was that expose and i was like no but Mm -hmm. later on as i was voting uh the bus i was like oh maybe maybe he's not He's not like no, those ones, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, it's it's a very thin line to know if you're doing impact or not. Uh, and especially when these exposes come up, mm-hmm. it was very, it was it very interesting sad, yeah. and strange. Mm-hmm. Uh, and for me, it's my heart bleeds that mm-hmm. people take advantage of Is generosity in that yeah, sense mm, because lot. now it impacts the next person. Mm. Because it's the true. next genuine person who comes to ask is like, are you, are you yeah, sure? Exactly. Yeah. You know, we are all human beings at the end of mm-hmm. the day. Mm-hmm. We'll look back and wonder, mm-hmm. am I actually impacting or is mm-hmm. it someone who's using it for their own selfish mm-hmm. benefit? Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay, that was for deep. sharing. <laughs> I know, I'm deep like that. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Lucy, for joining in. And maybe uh, any last comments uh, on your Giving Tuesday uh, project for this year or where can people find you at Good Kenyan? Okay, thank you. So you can find us on all social media. We are at Good Kenyan, double N, because someone else had already registered Good Kenyan. If you are the one, please give us back our name. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, we have a Giving Tuesday campaign this Tuesday, November 20, the next Tuesday, sorry, November 28th. And uh, we are doing a few clips online, but we are really doing an event, an evening of game night at Two Grapes, Nairobi. It's on Kilimani, um, on Kilimani, Nairobi, where you can find the details where they are from our pages, where we'll have just a fun evening of doing good while having fun like you're 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 having your drink you're having your meal but then you're you're playing games you're having conversations with people and enjoying yourselves we also have this segment where we call give or dare whereby you we have some celebrities that are coming up and you will give for them to you you'll give for them to do a dare Ah, so if you oh, give wow. then they'll do that there so imagine if you want ah, to see good. colin Zijera, if you want to see kibunja <laughs> Uh, Humphrey even himself doing a dare you give to us there on that day so we'll have a link on, on giving uh, we'll have a link where you can give through and you can participate online or you can come to, to grips, meet me, meet everyone else uh, who are more interesting than me and uh, have a good time <laughs> so please Karibuni on Tuesday to Grips Nairobi and thank, thank you, you and so much Beth for this this this, was... this goes beyond uh the the giving tuesday day itself so giving to good care is a continuous uh, yes. process yeah yes of course give every day give your time give a smile give a hug give everything but thank you so much beth it was wonderful Karim talking Sada. to you nice meeting you and i hope to see you soon thank you so much and we hope that this has inspired you to become a giving champion in your own community and the networks that uh, you are in see you on to the next one please listen in and give us tell us how are you giving in your own community thank you so much see you on the next one this was ubuntu giving podcast bye bye